Okay, and we're back. So um, the first thing today that I kind of wanted to go over with, that, that I forgot to go over with you uh, last time, was uh, on my website, if we go to, uh, I put up some notes, and uh, if we go to arcleation.com, and uh, we go to operators and expressions and the last day's video um, there's some notes I put down and that is in the last video I actually forgot to mention that the relational operators less than greater than less than or equal to greater than or equal to not equal to and equal to will also work with strings okay so in other words uh, you can have apple is less than banana, that's true, or cat is equal to cat, so you can compare strings, okay? Um, just like you can compare integers. So remember, kind of the, the stuff that we've, the, the three basic types of uh, data types that we've learned so far, right, are integers, floating point, and strings. Now, for, for integers and strings, these work great. They also work for floating point. However, notice here, I put a note in blue. This is a, this is a pitfall, okay, for programmers. If you happen to be using a floating point number and you want to check to see if that floating point number is equal to another number, don't do it. Because chances are it might fail and it probably will. And in ways that you're not expecting. For example, a floating point number like let's say 3.0 does not equal 3.00000001. Even though they're almost identical, it would still give you false. They're not equal because they're not exactly equal. You don't have this issue with integers and strings. Okay, now so what should you do for, does that mean you can't use any relational operators for uh, floating point? No, of course you can. Just You, you can just use things like um, greater than or less than. Okay, but as soon as you get into using equals, then things don't tend to work as well. Because you might think that these two numbers are basically equal, but the computer will report them as being not equal. And sometimes you might say, okay, well, why would I ever type in 3.00001? Well, you won't type that in. That might be a calculated value. And you're trying to see if that calculated value is equal to the number you're expecting or, or that you want to do something if it's equal to exactly 3. And you're, that you won't be able to catch that situation. So the other pitfall kind of thing that I want, wanted to go over is using the interpreter. So this line here, uh, 3 plus 6, on the interpreter works just fine. As soon as you hit enter, it'll give you the result being 9. But in a Python program, this really has no meaning. 3 plus 6, if you were to type that on a line, in a Python program, it's not going to do anything. One, because you're not storing the value, and two, you're, not, you're also not printing it. Now, storing it means saving it. This would be an example here of saying 3 plus 6 and assigning that result to a variable, in this case called answer. That does something. This line above, although it will it looks like it's doing something in the interpreter and you're, you're basically testing it out. In a Python program, it's pointless, it's useless, it does nothing. So this would be the way to go in, in a Python program. And then obviously, you could, you could also assign it to something like storing it in a variable. Alternatively, you could print it. You don't have to, you don't have to save it first before you print it. I could have just had print bracket 3 plus 6 
If you don't need to store the value, you could just simply print it. And that is, that is actually doing something. It's outputting the result of that sum to the, to the screen. OK? So let's kind of go back to our code here. And we kind of started off with, and, and here's a new little technology I'm going to show off here. So it's like a tablet. So we started off saying f was equal to 100. And then um, the next line in this program for the Celsius conversion would be something like c equals bracket, and the formula I think is f minus uh, 32 times. And now you can, or it depends, if, if you want you can use brackets, if you don't that's okay too, but I'm going to use brackets here just so that it's clear what I'm doing. Uh, but I want you to know in terms of arithmetic, uh, sorry, you know, in terms of mathematics, if I left these brackets off it would still work. Now that this is done, I can now use a print statement. I can go print bracket f string and then I would say one hundred oh uh oh I messed up. That's not one hundred. I would say bracket f so let's see if I can use an eraser here. Can I use an eraser? No, I have to actually switch to the eraser. Where's my eraser? OK, all right, this isn't working. Let's just, I, why, where's my pen? I can't even see my pen now. Uh-oh. Let's turn off the eraser. OK, back to my pen. I'll have to figure out how to use the eraser later. So it would be f string quote bracket f for the 100. And then I would write, uh, I can't even spell now, Fahrenheit uh, is Celsius. Okay. I just wanted to try using uh, a pen to see how uh, how it would work here. So, do you guys have any questions about about this uh, solution? All right. So let's move on now. Um, and let's go to our textbook. And uh, the next section is control flow. Okay? And um, here we're going to learn something new. We're going to we're going to learn how to use the if statement. So in order to use the if statement, first, we need to learn how to use the input command. So the input command is a very powerful, very cool thing to learn. It allows you to ask the user of the program a question and you wait for them to type something in. So now in order for me to demonstrate this, this doesn't, it's not so nice to, be, to see this demonstration in the interpreter, it makes more sense to see it in the uh, in a program. So let me go here now to Genie, and let's try something like let's go something like name equals input bracket. You guys type this too, okay? What is your name? All right, and now if I close this off, and that's it, just one line of code. What is your name? Let's run it. Let's hit F5. Notice when I run it, it, it actually asks me a question. It, it, it's, a, it's, it's printing that line. So it's kind of like a combination of two things. It's printing what's in the 
in the quotes, but it's also waiting for me. See, the, the cursor there is waiting for me. And I can type in Mr. Art. And then I hit enter. But it didn't really do anything, though. So let's go back to our code and add something in. Now, once I know what the what that variable is, so whatever I type gets stored in that name variable. Now I can say something, I can do something with that. I'm going to use an F string again. I can say, well, hello. Name. OK. So now if I run this, hit F5, it says, what is your name? OK, and now I'll type Mr. Ark again. And then it says, hello, Mr. Ark. Isn't that cool? That is pretty neat, hey? So what's happened here, right, is that it's getting the input on line two, and then it's grabbing that information from the keyboard during program execution. During program execution. And then it's printing out the result. However, there is something that I must tell you. That input, that input command on line two will always get you, or return, I should say return, a string. So no matter what I type, it's going to be a string. Now what do I mean by this? Well, watch, I can change I can change it somewhat here. Let's say for example if I said what is your name? And then I said something like um what if I said age equals input you guys type this too. How old are you? Okay. Sometimes it's also nice if you're asking a question just to have a space after the question mark. Like that. So that there's a little bit of room um, afterwards. Uh, now in this case, let's continue. And let's say, I say um, print f string. Now, how could I tell the person how old they are? I could say you are age years old. Does that make sense? Because age is the variable that stores it, right? So now if I hit F5, now it says, what's your name? OK. I could say something like, um, boo boo. How old are you? Uh, I'm 22. It says, hello, boo boo, you are 22 years old. Do you guys understand how that program is working? So now you're thinking, Mr. Art, you really did not make sense there because I thought you said whatever we type in is always going to be a string. Well, guess what? It is a string. So the age variable is a string. Okay. Um, if I if I kind of show you something in Python, I gotta kind of I gotta kind of remember how this works. Um, if I say x equals one and I go type x, there now it says that's an int. Okay, so if I come over here and I go type age, now. 
what do you think is going to happen? What's your name? BB, how old are you? 20, or I'm 2. And it says, oh, right, I didn't print it. Ha ha! Mr. Ark, you just fell into the trap of putting a command that does nothing in here. I thought it was going to print. But it's not unless I do print. So, I, I, I got to eat my, do my own dog food here. So, um, let's save it and run it again. How old are you? And there it says class string. So, age is a string. How can I change it into an integer? And also, why would I want to change it into an integer? I mean, what's the purpose of changing it into an integer? Well, I'll tell you something. I can't do any math with it. So let's, let's delete this line. And then let's just say, um, I, I wanted to say something like, uh, I, let's just say let's just say I want to do something like this. Let's say I said I want to go x equals age minus five. Let's try it. Run. What's your name? BB. How old are you? Eight. Uh oh, my program crashed. It says unsupported operand type minus for string and int. In other words, age is a string and 5 is an int. I can't subtract them. That's not going to work. So how could I do this? Well, if you want this age variable to be a, uh, an integer, there's a couple of different ways you can do it. All right, so let me show you one way here. It would be like this. I would have to redefine age after here on the next line to say int age. Now, that int means that I'm going to convert the string into an integer. Now, in this case, it's going to work because I've typed in 22. So and it, doesn't, it doesn't work in all situations. It only works if the string is in, basically looks like a number, right? So if I run this, I say, what's your name? How old are you? That's fine. That didn't crash. Okay, so I can actually do mathematics with... Um, I can do mathematics with the variable, okay? Um, now, moving on, what if I was to try and do the same thing with the other variable? Let's say here. What if I said name equals int name. Is that going to work? Let's try it. What is your name? BB. Uh-oh. It says, I don't know how to convert the word and turn it into a string. Okay? So, let me show you it in the interpreter. Maybe this might make some more sense. Um, in the interpreter. Uh-oh. Where did my terminal go? Yeah. Okay, so let me open a terminal and go Python 3. And now, if I did something like um, n equals, or let's just go a equals input um, I don't actually have to type anything in here, by the way. I can just do that. And now I'm going to type in uh, a number. Now what's A? Oops, A. 
A is 55. But is it a number or a string? Is it an integer or a string? How do you know? It's in quotes, right? So if it's in quotes, that means it must be a string. Haha. -ha. That's right. Input always. By the way, you don't have to put something in here. In the imp you can actually leave it blank if you don't want it to print anything. In that case, it just basically waits for you to type something without printing a question first. So let's try this again now. But this time, I could say a equals int a. And now a is not a string anymore. Notice the quotes have gone away. Now, if I do that, if I do it again, but this time for, for input, I type in not a number, but a word. And now it's, a, it's the string cat. And I try to convert it. Now it fails. So you can only convert it if the if the string is a number inside of the string. Make sense? However, there is a shortcut method for doing all this. You don't actually have to do it on two separate lines. And I'll show it to you now. Ready? Look at this. Instead of doing the so in other words, line 4 grabs a string, line 5 converts it to an integer. I can do both of these lines together in one shot. And the way I would do that is like this. I would simply put the brackets around the whole thing with int. And now I could say something like, instead of subtracting it here, look what I could say. I could say something like, Last year, you were age minus one. See that? So now, if I, if I run this, it says, what's your name? Uh-oh, it failed. Oh, that's right. I forgot about line three. Let's go back and fix that. I forgot about, because line three... I forgot to take that out. OK, out. Run it. What's your name? How old are you? Hello, BB. Last year, you were five years old. Aha. Nice. So look what we've done. We've The input statement grabs the string, and then the int in front of the input. And by the way, you'll need those brackets around everything, or else it's not going to work that converts it to an integer. You guys get it? Any questions? OK, great. So um, if we go back to the textbook, here they have an example where it, well, they actually have something where they have guess a number. We're not going to do that first, OK? Um, we're going to do something else. I'd like you to go back to the Fahrenheit uh, conversion program that we wrote, this one, although that's quite messy. Um, I want you to change this program such that it asks the user, instead of having you print out um, the 100 here, instead of getting, you not print out, but I say, instead of typing f equals 100, which is kind of not very useful because it can only convert one temperature, wouldn't it be nice if you could ask the user, what Fahrenheit would you like to convert? Or enter Fahrenheit. And then whatever the user enters, then the program will convert that value to Celsius and tell them what it is. That's what I want you to program right now. Okay?
Give it a shot. Go. Okay, so you can pause the video here and give it a shot. And we're back. So um, what I wanted to show you guys is the solution to that. And so here I have a version that I'd like you to see. This is actually not uh, converting Fahrenheit to Celsius, but the opposite, converting um, the other way around. But the other thing which you'll notice in this program is that I'm not using an F string. Okay? Now I can change this. So I could open this file he from here and let's go to um, uh, and then let's go to uh oh okay and then let's go to um, number one and then let's go here alright you don't actually need this first line. That's only for uh, Linux. And by the way, it should have a 3 there. But don't worry about this first line. You can just ignore it. Um, it's, only f it's only useful for if you're running Linux. But, and that's only if you wanted to run the program without typing Python first. But we're using, we're using Genie. So it's easier just to do things through Genie instead of trying to learn the command line. Um, I found that students are, if there's something even more difficult than learning programming, Python, it's learning how to use the command line. <laughs> so I, I've kind of uh, given up on that. Um, now, you notice here, is he saying enter Celsius, and we've got the int before there. Then we have this, and, and also this is Python too, so I don't have to do that anymore because this is Python 3. And then here I'm going to use an F string. Okay, so I could say like that. Okay? So now, and we don't need to, I don't know um, why I have that. Yeah, that's, that's the other way of doing it, right? But I need to do math, so let's just run this now. Uh-oh. Something messed up. Oh, right, it's raw input. That's Python 2. Okay, this is Python 3. Enter Celsius, 37. All right. How about, let's try it again, but this time, let's say I only want it to print, let's say, two decimal places. There. Now let's run it. 38. There you go. Okay? But I'm converting it the other way. You're converting it the other way. But the program is essentially the same. So now that you've learned how to use the input command, any questions? Okay. Now that you've learned how to use input and also convert it to an integer if you need it to be, um, let's go back to the textbook and see what's next. So what we have next here is the if statement. So we have if something equals something and now comes the most important thing you're going to learn and that is blocks. Now, a block of code is tabbed in. Now, you remember, we set our editor in Genie um, 
to put four spaces in for a tab. So that means if I if I ask a question here, how old are you? Okay. Um, I could use an if statement afterwards and say something like um, if age is equal to five, you know, what should we what should we do? Notice when I hit enter, it doesn't go to the beginning of the next line. It it Genie knows that I'm in an if block now. So the way that if blocks work is if if that's true, this line will execute. Okay, so let's say you are five. So let's get let's get rid of this first line. We don't need to ask the name anymore. And uh, let's also get rid of these two things here. And so basically, I'm just going to ask how old are you, and if age is five. There we go. Ready? So we're going to run this. How old are you? And I'm going to say four. And nothing happens. So it goes to line five and it says, does age equal five? And that's, that becomes false because four is not equal to five. Okay? And also be careful because, once again, I'm comparing this, the equal sign is to an integer. So let's run it again, but this time I'm going to say I'm 5. Now it says you are 5. So now the if statement returns true. And when I say returns true, I'm specifically talking about this. So, that, so in other words, the if is expecting a true or a false. I can, re I can replace this. Now watch this. I can just say if true. And notice I have a full colon at the end there. That's important. You have to put the full colon. So if I run this, how old are you? Notice this is always going to say you are five. Because I have if true. In other words, let me show you with, uh, with my pen. So if I go to this program and let's clear it okay the way the if statement works is I say if and now whatever comes in here has to be okay so there's a full colon at the end of the line whatever comes in there has to be either true or or false Get it? Now, we could type just simply true or false, but that defeats the purpose of doing a test. So in my case, if you do something like this, if you say if 4 is less than 5, now that's always going to be true. So this, in other words, this gets replaced. And in programming, I use the word returns true 4 is less than 5 so again I say what's the point of this since 4 will always be less than 5 and so the the technique that this is used with is using a variable so if I said something like is X less than 5 now X can be different values and in certain situations Maybe x is less than 5, in which case it'll evaluate to true. Or it could be more than 5, in which case it would evaluate to false. But you see, if it's true, then whatever comes after the if statement, so in other words, if I have if, and then I have my test, 
Now, whatever this block of code is here, which notice, by the way, has been indented. Now, usually you indent by hitting the tab key, which will put in four spaces. Okay, that's the, that's the normal way of doing things. So, all these lines of code will get executed if this returns true. If it returns, on the other hand, if it's false, then none of these will be executed. It'll skip all of them. So let's go back to our code and, and let's see how this works. So we'll say, how old are you? If age is greater than five, print you are older than five. Okay? So let's try running that. All right, how old are you? I'm five. Doesn't do anything. You notice it skipped line six. Now, let's try it again, but this time, let's say, uh, let's run it and let's say uh, I'm seven. Now it says you are older than five. Do you understand how the if statement works? Okay, now it, you can do more than one line though. In other words, if I hit enter again and I say print, Um, you are older than five, print, um, how about this? How about if I just said, uh, good for you, okay? Now watch, if I run this, I say, how old are you? Eight. It says, you are older than five, good for you. You see that? But what if I don't? tab this? What if I just go like that? Will it still print good for you? Let's find out. Make a, take a guess and say, all right, I'm nine. You are older than five, good for you. Oh, it still printed it out. Why is that? It's not in the indentation block because I haven't tabbed it. So what happens here is after line six, the, con the program just continues to execute. But what if I don't want it to? What if I only want to print something like, for example, I wanted to print um, something like, you must be younger than five. Okay, let's try that. You are older than five, you must be younger than five. That doesn't make sense. They both ran. So the way to accomplish this is to use the else statement. And we have to put the next statement in a block of the else. So notice if we go back to the textbook, the else is right here. Can you see where the hand is? That's where the else is. Now I know there's something above it called elif, but we're going to get there, okay, one step at a time. So now if I run this and it, if I type in eight, it says you are older than five. Notice it did not print you must be younger than five. It skipped that. So in other words, what's happening? So let's go back to my paint. And the way this works is let's start again here. Let's go if some test. And then let's have a block of code. And then I have my else effectively and then I have a, my block of code in after my else 
if this is if this is true then this executes this does not if if it's true on the other hand if it's false if this if this is actually false now then this sec this first section here does not execute and then this section will execute does that make sense so in other words if this is not true if it returns false that if this part is false then this part will execute and this part will not make sense all right so let's go back to so that's what's happening here. So let's run this again, but this time, let's type in how old are you? I'm two. You must be younger than five. You see how that works? So two is, is not greater than five, that's false. So it doesn't execute this part. Instead, it executes this part. All right? Now, that's only two parts of the if ladder. There's another part which you can use, and you can use as many of these as you like. Now those two parts, this is called an if ladder, and you can only have one if, and you can only have one else. Make a note of that, please. You can only have one if, not, not in your program, but I mean in one specific, you can have nested, we'll get into that later, you can have ifs within ifs within ifs within ifs, but in that one ladder, um, you can have elif inside. So it might be confusing for me to say you can only have one if. So maybe strike that. I think some people are going to get confused by that. So I could have something like this, elif age is um, let's say greater than 2 or how about I say how about I say something like um, yeah I could say greater than 2 What am I doing? There. Okay, so now, this doesn't make sense anymore, right? Because here I'm going to have to say print you are older than two. But now this doesn't make sense. You, I, now I'm going to have to say, well, let me, just, let me just leave this and let's just run it. How old are you? I'll say four. It says you are older than two. Okay. Now what if I did run it again, but this time I say I'm one. You must be younger than five. That doesn't make sense. So I have to change this to that. It says you must be younger than two. So now if I run it, how old are you? One. You must be younger than two. Let's try it again. How old are you? Four. You are older than two. Do you guys understand how that works? So only one of these three indentate, indented blocks of code will run in this if ladder. Only one of them. You can never have more than one of them run. So if I ran it again and I said I was nine, it just says you were older than five. And the other ones get skipped. So in other words, watch this. The order of operation is, if this is true, do the next line.
do the next block of code. It doesn't have to be one line. It could be more than one line as long as they're all indented. Now, if that's false, if age, is, age greater than 5 is, becomes false, then it'll go and test this. Okay? If that's true, it'll do this, and it'll skip everything else. If this one was true, if the first one was true, then it'll do the next block of code, and it'll skip everything else. Does that make sense? And if, not, if, if the first one's false and the second one is false, then it'll automatically do the last one because that's an else. Notice there is no comparison in the last one. There's no, there's, I'm not comparing if something is bigger or smaller than anything else. I'm just saying else do that. Let's take a look at the example now. By the way, one thing I should tell you is you can have more so, for example, I could have something like this, and then I could have something like this. And then I could just do whatever here. In other words, notice I have two elifs. I only have one else, and I only have one if but I can have as many elifs as I want. So let's go back to the book. Okay, let's move the book over a little bit. And here it says uh, guess equals in, in, uh, input enter an integer. If guess is equal to number, Print congratulations, you guessed it. Elif, guess if the guess is less than the number, print no, it is a little higher than that. Else, no, it's a little lower than that. Notice they don't actually test to see if it's um, lower. And the reason why they don't is because if it's not equal to and if it's not greater than, then the only other option is it must be lower. Okay, so that's another example of an if ladder with an if, an elif, and an else. Once again, notice the else, the else, the last one does not have a comparison. That ha always has to come at the end. Okay, in other words, you can't put the else in the middle. It has to come at the end of the ladder. We call this an if ladder. Only one of these sections will execute. So here is an example of what happens when you run that. You can look at that. But now I'm going to give you a, a, a new little assignment. And the assignment is, I want you to have a program that will ask the user how old they are. And if they're more than 18 years old, tell them that they are allowed to vote. But if they are younger than 18 years old, tell them that, sorry, you're too young to vote. Write that program. Pause the video now and, um, and give it a shot. Uh, or perhaps, um, actually, we'll, we'll continue this uh, next time. Yeah, so the, the, in reality, if you're greater than 18, I think it's like 18. If you're greater than 18, you can vote. If you're, less, if you're 18 or, or less, uh, you're not allowed to vote. Okay? So give it a shot and 